what's good welcome back to moon or dust episode 11 uh we got a ton to talk about today maybe not too nft focused which is also something we're gonna address how the nft market is doing but welcome everybody to the show thank you for once again being with us thank you we got ming in the audience we got max we got m yo we got the gorilla labs community rolling up in the audience what's good ash how you doing sir what's up man uh yeah weird not a lot of not a lot of nft stuff which is very odd a lot more coins a lot more crypto which i think we're probably moving away from i think a lot of people are starting to to pay more attention to coins because they know that there's way more money to be made there and that's why everyone's here dude there so. is so much more volume there's so much more people it's way more liquid like there's a lot more opportunity in tokens so if you're not if you're not doing it yeah it feels like why am i being sidelined and everybody's bull posting like prof whether it's meme coins whether it's ai coins gaming coins what just happened did the live what just happened what was <laughs> that did i pressed back on my mouse by accident and it exited me from the studio <laughs> Okay. The stream or the stream still okay. No, the stream's still good. Good. Yeah, we're um, alive, but that was weird. <laughs> dude. Yeah, no, I like this crypto Godzilla, dude. I got to do a rebrand. Um, yeah, no, where, where did I get? Oh, yeah. So you know, there's a lot of AI coins. There's a lot of gaming coins that are doing well, but it's funny. There's a lot of like with all the meme coin action, people are realizing. Wait, a lot of these coins in general are just meme coins. They're not altcoins. They're just they're also meme coins to use the uh, the PC term. Uh, but yeah, a ton to talk about today. Uh, first thing I guess I had on the list was just the major dump we had this week, which I guess a lot of people were were shocked by it. Let me pull up my screen here. Share screen window. Uh, it's this one, I hope. Yes, yeah, bada boom. Uh, let's get the better view going. There you go. Uh, dude, a lot of people were were shocked by the dump we had in the crypto market, which did have a recovery, but I'm, I'm still waiting. I... I personally think we keep going down. Um, I obviously I hope we don't, but I do have some buys that I'm waiting to get in. So I am hoping we keep going down. But you know, very red on the crypto charts, and uh, a lot of this. If you look at the ETF inflows slash outflows, like it's been a bloody week, uh, be, mainly be, or pretty much because of uh, GBTC here, with them continuing to sell hundreds of millions in crypto per day. Uh, with the first day they kicked it off, they sold $642 million, which was the first bloody day that we got. And then uh, we, were, we were going steady, dude. We had like on average $500 million uh, coming in, which um, I watch this dude on YouTube, Invest Answers, and he's like, hey, if the $500 million continues for the next year, which it won't, but let's pretend we had steady inflows of that on average, like we're going to be well over 300K Bitcoin uh, next year, which would be uber bullish. So for it to go red... Is really not good, but I mean, I think the markets are gonna. I think the more like BlackRock and all these guys come in, and it's gonna get more regulated. So a lot of the fun we have with with meme coining and all this stuff is gonna become a lot more boring. But at the same time, just look at gold and how easily they manipulate that, and they'll make like a hundred billion dollars, and then they get like a twenty million dollar penalty, uh, which is insane. Um, I think the same thing is going to happen in Bitcoin. Like they're going to be able to manipulate it like crazy. Did you see that one exchange? I forget the name. I think it's like BitMEX or something. I don't want to throw any exchange on the bus, but the liquidity was so low on the exchange that the Bitcoin price went to $8,000 just on that exchange. Yeah, how, I saw that. What, how crazy is it? First of all, if you had a limit order in for like 10K on that exchange, you instantly make 50 grand like immediately if it gets filled. But on the other side, let's say you you did a 25X long on Bitcoin at 16K, you were, you were bullish, it went up to 72 grand. You're like, why would I close my long? Like it's never going down to 10K, which is my my price where I get I get liquidated on. And then this happens and you just lost on, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on the multiples you use, but just getting liquidated, I'd feel bad for anybody that that happened to. That'd be so, I would be so mad. Imagine getting wicked on like a 50K candle, like yeah, a ridiculously long, like that would just be, I, I, I'd rage. 
for sure. Bo- Bobini here saying tons of liquidations around 59 to 56 K. So yeah, we see more down to be honest. I mean, I'm not like a TA guy, but I have a ton of friends who are, and they were all showing me like the, the target levels, I think it was 62. And then the lowest that they see is, uh, is 50 K at GM. Welcome to the show. I, it, it sucks. You know, if we go down to 50 K, obviously everybody looking at their bags, I, I put one in the, when we were bullish, I put my portfolio on my phone and I would look at it every 10 seconds. I have to delete it now that things have gone bearish because it's so depressing, depressing to see. Uh, but you know, going down would suck, but it, you know, it's also a, a great buying opportunity for anybody who's been looking to buy in, especially for altcoins, if they're going to get absolutely obliterated. I mean, I've been looking to get in on, on AI tokens. I'm glad to see a lot of red on the charts because after Becker posted his video, or even a little bit before Becker posted his video, most tokens pulled like, dude, a three to 10 X uh, for a lot of these coins. It was crazy. And I was completely sidelined. So I'm happy to see red on the charts because I am looking in to get a good position in AI tokens. I think it'll continue to do well. We also just had the NVIDIA conference um, where a lot of, you know, there was crypto companies like Near, the, the top one here, w- were there uh, on the 18th. So I had been following a lot of the narratives and everybody was saying like, yeah, I think AI is going to cool down after the conference. So they were they were right. You know, prices are going down. It was ended up being like a buy the rumors, sell the news kind of event. Since I thought a lot of people th- thought, hey, after after the event, prices are going to go up with bullish news, but it's the opposite. So I'm looking to get a position here, I'm looking to get more positions in gaming coins. So, I mean, I'm happy to see red on the charts, even though I know a lot of us are, are sad that our portfolios are going down. But uh, that was just to start off in crypto, but we could shift that over to meme coins. Did you? I know you did some of the pre-sales. Which ones did you get into? Yeah, so I only did one. I did one pre-sale, and it was shrooms. That was the only one because I was still. One you should have done. <laughs> yeah, the one that I should have done, and I actually sized pretty well into it. Yeah, so like when that whole thing was going on, I was still sick and not really feeling the best. So I wasn't really. I was I was paying attention and I was watching, but after Boom, it was like okay, the next ones don't always do the best. So for me, I was like, all right, like, let me find one that that seems like it's good. And with these pre-sales, like a lot of times, like what you want is you don't want to buy into a pre-sale that raises like 20 or 30 million. It's like you want to rate you want to buy into ones that are that that raise maybe like a couple million, which is still even a lot. Because obviously, like if everyone is sending for a pre-sale, then who's going to buy the token on launch? obviously. So with shrooms, they ended up announcing a cap and they raised like three or 4 million, but I put 20 soul into it. And when it launched, um, there were a lot of people on this trade specifically. So what was happening with some of these other pre-sales that I'm sure we're going to talk about is that a lot of people were sizing into them because they were like, they were putting in, I don't know. I saw a couple of people that were putting in a thousand soul and then it was going to like 2000 and then they were selling it. So they were trying to get a nice 2X with size. And so for whatever reason on shrooms, it didn't really work exactly the same way. I think it might have been because the pre-sale meta was exhausted a little bit by that point. But I turned 20 soul into 140 and I sold pretty, pretty quick. And I do know of a lot of people that sized into that one specifically, and it didn't necessarily end up working out. Yeah. Uh, so I, like you said, it all started with uh, the book of meme, uh, which, dude, did you find any of that sus? Like how quickly it happened where they, they just got on Binance like a, a day later? Um, I don't understand how that happened. Yeah, that was so, so weird. Um, but some people absolutely cooked. I saw this tweet here by Arkham uh, Intel, and they were just showing some of the top traders. Yeah, dude, some people absolutely cook this. Uh, or exactly like you said, dude, the people, I even posted about one, a whale sizing into, I forget which token he did it, but he put in 300K within two minutes. He made one point, or he profited 950K, selling at 1.2 mil. If you're good at, if you could snipe, dude, some of these people absolutely cooked. Uh, I have no idea how to snipe on, on Solana. So well, I don't know, but there's there's like a bot, the, a really good bot. bot that pe- yeah, yeah, it's called Peppermints, and like yeah. right now it has a 436 soul floor. 
I don't even know how much that is in USD, but there's like a group of people and I actually added it to our sheet so you could pull uh slippage like the on, on the thing where yeah. yeah. Yeah, so this kid and his buddies and I believe that they're in pastel, but like they sniped with size on like three or four of these coins and they just hit like a they hit like a 2x on on a million bucks multiple times this week and now the guy's just like I'm done. It's like I mean dude could you imagine if you're sitting on seven point two million dollars in Seoul? Like, would you be done? Would you be done? Like, honestly, would you just quit? I'd no, quit I'd, trading, bro. What? That'd be so insane. No, I'd probably cash. I'd take out like six mil and live seven, live one mil to to keep trading. But dude, to you have to have balls of steel to size into something with uh a million dollars something like this that just launched you have no idea what's going to happen you could lose 600k in a second yeah you could well that it's it's very scary because there are a lot of people i remember during last shitcoin season they were sniping with like five or six eth into brand new coins and there were certain situations where people would snipe and then they would get blacklisted right like you don't know if if that could happen i actually i don't know if this is true so don't quote me on it, but I heard that you can't blacklist addresses on Solana for some reason. So I don't know if maybe that's one of the reasons why they were taking a risk like that. But there's just so much more that can happen on ETH. Like you can get blacklisted. Um, obviously, like you could get you could get a bad fill. Like there's a bunch of things that could happen. So yeah, those guys that that guy slippage, dude, he crushed it. And then what's also funny, and you don't have to play it, but he then like posted a video of him like playing guitar like right after. And it was actually so funny because he was just like, he was like, I'll never let the money change me like in song. And I was just like, this is just, I mean, yeah, that one it was pretty funny, but it was good. It was good. He clearly likes to, he's, uh, yeah, he likes to, to play music. So anyway. Yeah. Uh, but dude, overall, this this meta was crazy. Like thirty three presales, some of them being rugs, raised one hundred and fifty million dollars. Like I, you tweeted this right. Like NFT projects dream of this to be able to raise like one percent of this, you know, one one point five million dollars. And these these presales coming out because they understand, dude. They understand what we want in Web three. We don't want all these promises. We we or we want the promises. We want speculative assets. We want to know that numbers going to go up. Too many projects have forgotten this. They think like they come in with their their vision and all. Dude, most people don't care. They want to know like why is this hyped? Why am I going to buy this? But yeah, it's pretty crazy. I did too. I I, I faded, dude. It's funny. I went to the the trippy shrooms event in uh, I think it was in Miami at Art Basel. It's one of the best events I went to. Yeah, like, I really sick. enjoyed myself. Yeah, it was and, super sick. I went to and, that like two years ago, and I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't put money in. <laughs> um, my friend put money in, and he he. We might have round tripped it, but he could have cooked. Um, but yeah, I did monk or moon key, which I got. That was one of the worst. Like the guys completely incompetent with what they were doing. Uh, it was very, and that's on me. Like I, I sent money to an anonymous wallet that I have no idea who the person is. So I deserve to get absolutely wrecked, right? Um, that one was extremely frustrating. And then the other one was small, where they kept stall. They stalled for like four days, and I just went to bed, dude. And it launched at like four a.m. my time. And uh, I could have like seven x my investment. Instead, I I basically made most of my money back from from my loss on Moonkey. I sold both. My, I don't care. I don't want to give any more energy towards this. I'm wasting so much time just like waiting for these guys to launch and then look, staring at the chart. I just dumped and got out. Uh, so I put in twenty soul. I lost two soul. So not the end of the world. Uh, but yeah, a lot, dude. The the slur thing was absolutely insane. Where he just burnt ten million dollars. He says on accident. I I don't know. It, it could have been like a genius marketing move because then they did launch and they went all the way to wait, did they go to one point? Okay, no, it doesn't match. Um, they went to 800 mil market cap. Like, how crazy is that? Everybody was trolling them. Like, imagine you wake up, you see on the charts, slurf at 800 mil. You think, like, dude, I made it. I just made like 300K with my investment. You go look like, oops, like I burnt the. I burnt your soul and you're getting nothing from this. Like what? I'm he's anonymous. So I guess I wonder if somebody's going to try to find him and then uh, take legal action. Cause you know, you sent money for a presale and you got absolutely nothing in exchange. 
Yeah, I don't know. That was such a a good marketing stunt, and then he like got on spaces and he started crying, and the, like, Did dude, he? yeah, he he milked it pretty hard. So it makes me it makes me think that it was that it was a coordinated thing. I mean, mm-hmm. still, like, it's it's kind of shitty because if you think about it, even if it is a marketing stunt, like you're still putting people in a weird position because. Like everyone that's sent is obviously going to be upset. Like everybody is going to be like, what, what's happening? So it's like, you put a lot of like stress on people that send in for something like that. But you know, in crypto that people will essentially do whatever it is that they need to do to get attention. And that was definitely like a, a, it worked. Like it was a good, it was a good tactic. Yeah. uh, There's an audience question here from Bobini. Uh, How do you feel about the mass shift to base and most, to base and most big influencers tweeting uh to shift over and then he he follows up here and then and then them kind of tweeting the same thing uh you think coinbase paid them to shill um so i do know there are i have been approached in the past by companies who wanted to privately pay me uh, stuff that a lot of people are shilling right now by the way and i i turned it down uh and not, not base or anything like that but one of these like airdrop things uh and they wanted to privately pay, uh, like not have me put ambassador or anything, but they didn't want me to directly show them. They want you to show a narrative. So let's say it's a gaming project, a trading card game. They'll be like, hey, just talk about trading card games in general. And then they know that naturally their project is going to be part of the conversation. And they, I mean, I'm sure a few companies get together and do this and they're like, hey, let's just make trading card games a narrative because you have a game. I have a game. Like we can either all pay these guys individually and we're going to each end up spending $5 million or we could together spend $5 million. So I do think there is some of that stuff that goes on. Look, I haven't been approached by base uh, or Coinbase. I, I assume Ash, you haven't been, but I think, you know, a few tokens, Brett did well. Uh, there was that guy crash who posted on his YouTube that he's going to put in. He, I think he put in 30 K total, but he's going to put in 50. Yeah. But he had already put in 15 like he, in the thing, he says turning 15K into one or 10 million, I forget. But then I watched the video and he's like, I already sized in 15. I'm trying to put another 15. But anyways, yeah. he puts in he puts in a small or low five figures and he's turning into multiple millions, which he did. It's currently worth like three or something million, depending. I know the base coins are retracing. Um, so he did that. And I think that caused a lot of people to like, I, I saw that happen on another coin called Wolf. The ticker was balls and um (laughs) i I forget i forget who did it but it's like you know a a coin caller and he posted it when it was very low and he said like i won't sell till it hits 100 mil or a bill or i think it was a bill so i think most people's logic because people sent it to me and i bought in and i i I like forex my money or whatever it was i think the logic is well okay if this guy thinks it's going to 100 mil or a bill it's at least going to go to 20 or to like 15 so people are are buying in and it does cause cause an initial an initial pop off. So I do think he had a lot of uh of pull there, especially that he bought in at like 1 or 2 million. And then but for it to go to 300 or whatever it is, it takes a lot of people, but I think most people just jump on the bandwagon like you see, oh wait, Brett just popped off. There's action on base happening. Like, okay, let's let's get in and start pump, uh, pushing these meme coins. Like I know a lot of the KOLs who do the 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 meme coin stuff and they push coins they just size in themselves and then they're like yeah i'm gonna push this coin because i'm gonna make a lot of money uh so they ended up pushing it so i don't think it's like a a, a plan by base uh, i just think jesse it was mostly jesse was just like he even said he tweeted about it. he's like hey i was kind of hesitant with meme coins but like i'm really liking what i'm seeing so all the people all the devs and all the influencers like wait base is going to support us and our bags cool and they just started going all in and everybody was jumping on the same coins and obviously they're all going to push it. So I don't, I don't think, I don't know why camera keeps doing that. I don't think uh base paid anybody. I could be totally wrong. Um, it was just off to me that Ansem and Beanie and other big names tweeted around the same time. Okay. I didn't notice this. So maybe, maybe, or maybe they just planned between them. If they're talking about the same tokens, it's usually the token itself paying them. Uh, and just most people don't say when they're being paid. Um, because that's going to ruin the whole point. So I don't think it was base. I think base was just like, Hey, yo, we're getting all this action. And I do believe in the base narrative, especially dude, there's that. I, I faded it, dude. Normie at, um, at 10 at 8k, my friend sent it to me and said like, Oh, I, I like 8K? this. Coin. I think, 
Uh, eight, no, sorry, eight mil, eight mil. DJ sending micro shit coins. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Eight mil, uh, eight mil sent it to me, and I faded it, which was a huge mistake because it ran up to like 160. It's currently at 100 mil, so I faded like a, a massive play. But dude, like, just their posts are hilarious. They're just putting this normie guy, like, I don't know who's doing these videos, bro, but this guy's talented. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're they're just pumping out actual good content like it's it's memeable it's viral it's shareable so they're doing a good job um i got into blue uh, i i'm i'm still holding a big position in blue i just all i did was take out my initial but i'm holding a big position in blue um because i do believe in the base narrative and i do see especially if coinbase adds all these coins to their to their uh, platform like what are you going to buy as a meme coin you're going to buy the base coins uh, everybody's going with like a blue character it's pretty funny uh and and same thing with nfts i know um kenick uh part of my community i uh, hear oh he was right there uh dude he's been go he's been crushing it with the base content like both nfts and tokens he's sharing a lot in my community so shout out to kenick for doing this like dude there is there are a lot of great plays to be made on base so i think it's just people taking advantage and yeah for the kols dude it's just uh it's weird that they tweet together normally like they you know they stage them out but big guys like beanie and ansom uh who knows why they do what they do maybe it's just them talking to each other like hey you got your bag i got my bag yeah let's go let's pump it you never know uh thoughts on crypto valley yeah i did want to talk about uh blast a little later uh but i guess we're getting into the whole nft scene now uh, so we'll get into blast but first i did want to talk about uh, the revival of ETH NFTs. I did see a lot of people saying like, hey, ETH NFTs are going to make a comeback. I'm going to start to position myself. And they started buying into Azuki, to um, a few other collections. Sad seeing my captains down, especially when they're backed by meme coins. So they're technically worth like 2x. But yeah, currently seeing, I, I think these took a, a big dip. When they introduced Stakeland, I guess a lot of people were disappointed that, you know, staking captains currently doesn't have anything. I do believe they will have plans for it. But right now they're focused on meme coin. But it would be nice since we have all the meme coin locked up in our captain if we can get some advantage for uh, for holding on, like holding on to captains. Uh, that'd be great, especially those I've been holding two since literal mint day one. It's the longest NFT I've ever held in my life. Uh, but yeah, dude, uh, seeing revival. I mean, board apes went solo. Um, this, it's funny because this is something we had spoke about. I guess before the show, when we would do spaces, we would talk about this, like. I wanted an ape probably for the wrong reasons, right? I wanted it as the whole PFP, which I've learned in the past. Don't do that. Don't buy something just for a PFP. You're probably going to end up regretting it. There needs to be a narrative behind it. Uh, I do love ape culture and I wanted a PFP, but I was going to buy one around 25. And then I kept like, we would discuss this, right? We were like, Hey, what's the upside for a board ape? Probably goes to 60 best case, 60 ETH, especially when ETH goes up, it's going to be a lot harder for some of these NFTs to reach prices from last cycle. Like, I don't see apes ever going back to 150, even if it's super bullish, because uh, ETH is going to be worth like 10K. Um, but the upside on an ape, okay, so that's two, two and a half X best case. But we know if I buy Solana or AVAX or an AI or gaming coin, I know I'm going to get a 4X minimum. So, and it's way more liquid than an ape. And there's not blur farmers just dumping 100 at a time, right? You don't have Maki coming in to dump <laughs> in one second. So, why would I buy? Why would I put so much money in, in an NFT unless I know there's a catalyst coming up, unless there's something happening? Why would I put all this money in it when I could just go buy a token? Well, that's and the issue with the Yuga ecosystem overall is like there's no catalysts and their last couple catalysts like haven't really done anything, which is the problem. It's like there, there just haven't been like the last big catalyst for Yuga was Dookie Dash, it was the sewer. The sewer passes like that was, was great oh, yeah it was that was actually like pretty sweet like if you had an ape like i think the sewer passes ended up going for like five or six eth or something like that but it's like when you go look at what other side lands are selling for now and it just like i mean codas are selling for like i, I believe i saw them selling for like an eth two eth other deeds uh, are no way yeah, they're they're dead because nobody knows what they are. And yeah, other deeds are at point two. Uh, other dude coda. Uh, three, three. Oh wow, they went as low as one point one, dude. That's yeah, that's what great. I'm saying. 
Wow. Yeah. No, it's like you would never believe it, but because they were selling for 20 ETH like all day long. How and cool so, were these when they came out? Dude, everyone everyone was losing their mind. Like everybody was so excited about it. And that's like part of the issue. Like it's just it sucks considering that like now all of these airdrops, like they went down so far over time and then ApeCoin and whatever. Anyway, point is is like there's just I think that especially with the negative connotation that surrounds apes in like culture and stuff to like pop culture, like just people don't love apes the way that they used to. And pudgy penguins is just such a more family friendly and less diluted collection, which is why now what's actually funny is people were talking about when pudgies and we're going to flip apes and like now it happened and like it happened like by a lot like 0.7 or so like that's that's crazy to me and the last thing that i'll say is that i remember that there was a thing like a year ago like if you sold your ape like you could have bought like 15 pudgies or something like that at like a certain point and and to think about like that rotation obviously i don't think anybody i don't think anybody did it but it's just so weird to think that like apes and yuga are on a downward trajectory but pudgy penguins are like on a consistent run-up so it's like which would you rather buy one that's on a free fall or one that's like on a consistent like uptrend yeah i don't know about consistent uptrend because they were at 22 the first time they flipped and they went down to 10 dude they went sub 10 like that's losing 50 percent of your money sucks for all holders like dude you were so bullish it was at 22 it went down to nine like that absolutely sucks um but if you at, but look now, at the chart and zoom out they're on an uptrend uh, after a downtrend <laughs> no no like i'm talking about over like a year period like a year oh yeah yeah, okay yeah yeah you're you're doing some ta there like a coin yeah i get what you're saying yeah I, um, dude i wish on blur i mean i i know mentify you can go more than a year i guess i can open up OpenSea. um but i see what that. you're saying but yeah I see yeah. What you're saying. yeah yeah but but now it's because they just got another airdrop right did they yeah, didn't they? Yeah, they qualified for like the. I guess it's the the second part oh. of the NIM airdrop, the NIM. Oh yeah, but but that wasn't like in their ecosystem. So, but isn't that why they had this run up? We got a pudge it? in the audience. Uh, I I spent more ETH. I spent more ETH on lost gas to mint those than the current cost of the other. Oh, he's talking about uh, yeah, dude. Uh, we all two two ETH to mint them. Uh, it sucked. But then here he's talking about uh, <laughs> uh, it hurt. The pudge is going down, but fifty percent of holders held over a year. Yeah, so they're most over fifty percent are are up. Yeah, I got a few NIM. Okay, so I guess it wasn't like DIM where people were given given like I mean the price of DIM went up, so they were given like literally ten k. But I guess this re sparked in people's minds. Like, hey, we are going to get airdrops because there was a rumor that they were going to get up to four airdrops or something like that. And I thought it was like layer zero and uh, ZK sync. And it, and it might be. Who knows? But I think this is showing people like, hey, the Pudgy team is really doing this. They are approaching all these protocols. I don't know what's in it, by the way, like for all these. This is something I thought like I was thinking, hey, maybe I should do an NFT and I could approach uh, all these all these token projects. And like offer them a video yeah. and in exchange they just airdrop to my nft holders my community it would be a very small nft if i do like a 6551 and it would be airdropped into the nft so if you're listed somebody could snipe it you know if your thing's too low uh that's something i thought of doing a while back i'm st i'm just too scared to launch an nft but <laughs> what what uh you know what's in it for these projects they're li they're just giving it I guess you're giving it to like a strong holder, right? Somebody who's willing to hold a 20 ETH asset, but you're looking to get money out of that asset. So you're just going to, you're probably going to dump as anybody would, whether you hold a pudgy or not. Uh, the DJ from Girl Lab saying, yo, NFT, let's go. <laughs> Send it, moon it. Yeah, uh, it's 100%. Layer zero, ZK sync, bear chain for pudgy. That would be extremely bullish, dude. Pudgies are undervalued if that's the case. Um. Yeah. Um. Sorry, random DM caught my attention. Where were we in in this? Uh, you added some stuff here. You added some art projects. I have no idea what you want to say about these. You want to take the take the lead here? Yeah. Well, pull up the Punk nine zero five nine tweet. 
So yeah, on this, uh, there has been a huge drop in art blocks, which when you look at their historical all-time highs, like Gazers, Gazers had an all-time high of like 40 ETH. And this was in November of 2022, I think. And then Squiggles, like they had an all-time high of like 20 ETH. Now they're at five. Fidenzas, like obviously they went up crazy. Now they're at like 49, but they're super liquid. And it's just like so weird to look at this now because the art scene on ETH is just so, so dead in comparison to like how it was. And it's like, are th we talk about PFPs. We talk about like Bored Apes and Pudgy because obviously like that's what a lot of people care about. That's what people pay attention to the most when they're talking about you know, just like your, your Azuki's and like those big projects, captains. But what about like the art stuff? Like the, you know, I, and I'm sure you remember this, like around this time last year, there was like a massive open edition and art meta that went really crazy and everyone was losing their mind over art. And now it's like, are these going to come back? Like it, it's a weird, it's a weird question, but it's like if art does come back, then Gazer, Squiggles, Fidenzas are like the those are some of the top art blocks collections. Like that's the kind of stuff that would you would hope come back. I I see a lot of this stuff moving to Bitcoin, dude. I mean, I want to see an art blocks. I know uh, the homies over at Inscribing Atlantis. I have no exposure to this, by the way. I've spoken to a couple of artists and, and I know the team behind it. I know they want to do an, an art uh, art blocks on Bitcoin, which I think would crush if they managed to do it properly. Uh, I think art blocks on Bitcoin would do well. Um, but yeah, art, art on Bitcoin just makes sense. We have uh, Delucris with his Bitmon. I couldn't, I couldn't find the actual, maybe it's, maybe today it'll be there. I know it was a claim. It's almost fully claimed. Uh, if you're watching, dude, and nobody claims these, I will claim all 10, uh, please. <laughs> but uh, I'm not sure if they're tradable yet. But like I, I've been saying, I want to see. Okay, they are. Um, 0.13, nice. Like these are really cool, dude. Uh, I I love this artist. I've covered him many times in my in my ETH videos, like my artist spotlight videos, which are some of my favorite videos. Like I should I should do another one. But um, yeah, I want to see I want to see more artists go into Bitcoin, dude. Because I think I think the Bitcoin scene, at least for now, they really love art. You know, the meta shift, and we'll see what happens in the future. But right now, I think it would be really hot on Bitcoin. Like it would do super well. Um, I've been saying I want to see bigger artists like Sam Spratt. I know I show him every time. I'm not a holder of his pieces currently, but I got to put in a bid. The bid just keep getting higher and higher. Uh, I would love to see him burn these and just do a mask reveal on Bitcoin. I think if we see art on Bitcoin, it's going to do incredibly well. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a shame to see all these these collections go down. You know, these were the ones who would always hold in price. We would we would always see the art metas, right? Where all the art passes would start to pump that get you exposure to all like future drops. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when proof was over like 100 ETH. <laughs> yeah. Of that course. Was crazy, dude. Yeah. Well, that's like uh, why I wanted to bring this up because it's just like when uh, when you think about cycles, we haven't had like a resurgence back into like art. Like we haven't had like a, another art cycle. And it's like when you're talking about the things that are currently dead, like this is the first thing that comes to my mind, which is like all these art collections, which is it's it's just like a lot of this is historical stuff like it's art blocks. And a lot of people talk about how putting art on chain is like one of the things that's going to make crypto and everything so so special and important. And to see them at like what it feels, it feels like a bottom. Like to me, it's like, I feel like it's a, it's just so risky because there's no attention there. And it's like the same kind of thing. It's like, what do you do? Do you put five ETH into a squiggle or do you put five ETH into an AI coin or a gaming coin or something? Like what has like the surefire return? Agreed. And it's, and it's just yeah. scary to think yeah. about. I think it's way easier to go unless you really know the art scene and you know people behind the scene. I think it's easier to just go into a an, a gaming coin or a uh, an AI coin, like you said, and and those are going to be a way stronger narrative. There's so many art collections to choose from too. Like most people aren't experts in this field, so how are you going to know like 
oh, I'm going to buy this, you know, versus, and don't they continue to mint? Maybe it's minted out, but don't squiggles like continue to mint over time? Or they release they, some every once in a while? Yeah, they, there's like a certain amount that are still mintable, but it's only like another thousand or something. Like, I don't think it's anything crazy, but I mean, that's, that is still a lot. Yeah. You're adding a thousand to the supply. Uh, but I don't think they're dead or anything, especially the bigger collections. You know, it's, it's notable artists, right? It's, artists that people like so when they're going to get collectors when the market it's just the nft market hasn't turned around yet even we've had a we had a little but everybody was praising like we're so back like okay <laughs> like you know we're up like 10 i guess 30 percent on pudgies but some stuff was just you know not that much percent and uh the market's looking weak again so we could see another downturn yeah anyway that's what i wanted to talk about art stuff yeah, I mean, uh, where is the NFT? We're going to talk about um, ordinals in a second. I did want to, did you see this mint? I mean, I, I completely faded it. Uh, the uh, Crypto Valleys, I know somebody in the audience had asked about this previously. Uh, the Crypto's Valley mint, they're down now. They went up to, they went pretty high. Uh, I saw them when they were at like 0.69. I think they went a bit higher. I know uh, CK, I think he posted like, I guess he sold a rare or something for 6.9 ETH. Or I, I don't know why he posted that. But uh, these did really well, especially on Blast, dude. Everybody, I, me included, I was just like, oh, Blast. The only one, the only previous Blast collection that did well was the back, which was also a gaming play. That was this one, and it's holding very strong. Uh, they're partnered with Altiverse, so they have like a questing thing going on, I guess, right now. But uh, this one did really well. Their game should be out soon. But Crypto Valleys is live. I'm seeing a bunch of people in the timeline farm it. The yield token did incredibly well. Um, who did I see post? I think it was YP. He posted he bought four ETH of the yield token. It's currently worth 21 ETH. Like, absolutely. Yeah. Um, there's just, there's too much to do, right? There's, <laughs> this is something I have on a list. Like, where do you put your focus, dude? There's NFTs on like a million different chains. There's meme coins. There's altcoins. There's, there's games. You could cry, you could grind for a game airdrop. There's, there's farming regular airdrops. There is just, there's all these investment rounds that we're like getting offered now. There's just so much trying to grab your attention. I guess the best thing you just, you niche down, dude. Yeah. You have to pick what's best for you. And like, I think a lot of it just depends on how much money you have. Right. Because it's like, if you're not high capital, then maybe you just farm airdrops. Like, obviously we've talked about gaming a ton in the past. It's like, that has kind of slowed down a little bit, but there's like certain things that like, you know, for example, like gaming, like that's, that's going to launch, but that's like also a token. And yeah, like it's just, it's, it's, this is one of the biggest problems in crypto is that like, there's just so many different things that you can do. And there are some people that they just farm blur still. Like there's some people that like, they just only trade shit coins. So yeah, I mean, I personally will say that like I do also still struggle with this because you and I both make content, right? That takes up a ton of time. It's like we have groups and it's like we're trying to land collabs. And so it's like for me, I've always kind of just stayed within the like NFT and coin. Like I don't really farm that much ever really because to me it's like it's just tough. But yeah, no, I'm I'm with you all the way. And I think that one big thing if you were to ask me like to give a piece of advice to anybody, it's like find your one thing that you're really good at and that you really like and just double down on whatever it is that that may be, whether it's NFTs or coins or and, and then it's like when you're in that, like, do you focus on gaming or AI? But yeah, like I would just I would niche down for sure. Yeah, I just realized I wasn't streaming my screen. Uh, these were the crypto valleys that I was talking about. I want to pull. I like the art, dude. The art is actually really nice. Not that art matters, but it's it's really nice for a pixel art. Uh, I really like it. Um, but a couple questions here. A airdrops. Yeah, I tried to do some airdrop stuff, but uh, same thing. Like I'll neglect it for a month or two. Then I I have like a farm that I made twenty wallets with like proxies and everything. So I, I hopefully won't be identified as a cyber. Um, Yes, I'm grinding airdrops as of now. Uh, Ish coins don't work for me yeah dude uh, it's really hard i i literally i i'm not good at it like i buy some on my own i lost money on like five coins. i just buy what some of my friends tell me to buy because they're good and they spend all their time doing it um how do you guys man manage your time doing this full time in web3 i have absolutely no life like <laughs> i went out for dinner with my friend because he's having a kid for the first time in like months that i go out dude i have absolutely this is all i do 
uh, from the sun up till sundown. Like, like Ash just said, like we have our groups we have to take care of. I mean, I, I guess delegate, like I'm trying to, my collab managers, I'm trying to get them to just handle everything with collabs unless I need to come in. Uh, or if I just want to talk to the project because it's a dope project. But uh, yeah, there's just so much, dude. People don't realize how much goes into it. You got to keep up your your socials. You got to tweet. I got, got to do the YouTube, like research, talk to teams, write the script, film. Thankfully, I have amazing editors. Uh, then on top of that, I do advising through a little plug for my companies, Web3 Wizards. And then I just started Wizards Capital, which um, is a syndicate. The website should be out next week. So I keep getting asked, how do I join? How do I join? It's going to be an application through referral. Like there are some strict criteria to get in. Uh, it's a free to join. Ash is one of our wonderful members, as well as a couple of people in the audience. Uh, but here we're doing investments. So same thing. Like I got to research these investments and I got to look even Ash and I have to look like, is this stuff we want to put our money into the amount of not only NFTs, NFT projects that are approaching us now, but like tokens and uh, or, or projects that are like offering an investment round. And like you don't want to miss, dude, you don't want to miss the next portal. So you can't fade it. Like you have to look into everything. It is extremely overwhelming. There is so much going on. So I guess you just need a good team of people around you. Um, and you just, you focus on your strengths, they focus on theirs and you help fill out each other's, uh, weaknesses. But, uh, yeah, dude, it's, uh, it's definitely overwhelming to do all this stuff. There's too much noise. There's so much going on. You're seeing a bunch of people post their profits on Twitter and you just FOMO. Cause you're like, why am I not making, you know, $7 million on a, on a meme coin in 30 seconds? Um, it's really easy to let that happen, but, uh, I, you know, don't let that happen. Don't, mm -hmm. uh, don't just focus on what you're good at. And the cycle always moves. Everything moves in waves. So if you're, if you're gaming focused, like dude, it's, I think it's about to come back to gaming, especially. So, you know, don't lose focus, keep going deep in your niche. And when it rolls back to you, you're going to be the one posting, hopefully your profits or, or like the plays you've made or like the cool game that you found or whatever it is, because that's what you know. Right. Um, anyways, moving on. Uh, to I already covered this. That was Bitmon. Uh, I did want to get into the ordinal stuff. Let's just head over to. I'll pull back up my screen. Let's over to uh, Matt. I, I already have it pulled up. I was going to do Runestone, but let's uh, OMB. Uh, I know we spoke about this last week. This is like a, a last week thing, but uh, they're holding. They're ranging pretty much what we thought, right? They're going to range between just like Green Eyes did for the longest time. They ranged between 0.4 and 0.6. I assume they were going to range between, you know, 0.35 and and a little higher um than this but you know they're ranging between basically 0.4 and 0.5 so they're doing pretty well i picked up i have two right now i picked up a second one ash i know you picked one up um i'm not sure if you're you're still holding it uh what do you make of these yeah i'm holding mine i feel like you just hold it like i don't really know any other way to put it it's like i just feel like it's one of those things that you just hang on to it and if ordinals go up it's one of the projects that goes up what do you, excuse me, we're going to get into ruin stones, but what do you think about ruin stones? Do you think a lot of these <clears throat> collections are going to get airdrops or have exposure to it? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I mean, I think ruin stone, I mean, uh, Leonidas, he keeps telling everybody like, like this is going to be like an airdrop, like farming, like you're going to lose, like everyone's going to lose their mind. Like every, like there's, just, or Air, not airdrop farming but like there's gonna be like airdrops that just happen just by holding it like this is he keeps saying like it's going to be the like airdrop ordinal to have so i don't know how you can per, like i don't know how you can make sure like ensure that that happens but yeah like i i think that rune stones are probably gonna be a good hold i bought rune pups don't know why i'm down 50 percent on those so <laughs> same bro same. so what the fuck is that like first of all i think they'll do well you know i might go buy more at this current price uh i'll just take a shot on them who cares yolo uh i have i got airdrop two rune stones i had listed one pretty high i wonder if it went that high uh i don't think so but the rune stones dude for 112k supply these are doing incredibly well shout out leonidas dude crushing it with this literally airdropping people every 112,000 wallets thousands of dollars dude that is insane um did you get any of these no i wasn't holding ordinals at the time got you yeah i was lucky enough to get two. like dude a random wallet that i forgot about on my laptop 
I was holding the most random. I meant the stuff that went to zero. So I was like, oh, I'll just take that. It's, I, I barely paid, right? It was cheap mint prices. But uh, it's funny that it managed to qualify me for this. So I'm, yeah, I'm holding one at least. I'm going to hold and see it through. I don't know how rune stones are going to play out. Like everybody seems to be super bullish. Uh, me as well, right? I'm excited for it. But I don't want like when SHIB was launching their chain, I got excited. When Blast was launching, I got excited. I don't want... I don't want to get overexcited by anything anymore. I want to approach it like level-headed. You know, there might be a ton of bugs at first. Who knows how it's going to work? When when Ordinals first came out, people were trading on, on spreadsheets, you know? So I, I want to chill and not expect everything to be super bullish day one. Uh, I think I'll be in Dubai anyways for Token 2049 when this launches. It's April 19th, the halving. And I think it's Ruins are launching on the halving. So uh, I don't want to get overly bullish. But yeah, there's a lot of collections. There's the RSIC that are still doing pretty well. These are ranging. Uh, they were above 0.1 at one point, but then uh, Casey came in and said, hey, I'm going to be launching the first 10. For the people who don't know, by the way, ruins are just going to be ish coins on Bitcoin. So you're going to be able to trade just like we're doing on Solana right now, just like we're doing on base. You're going to be able to do that on Bitcoin. So I do think it's going to bring a ton of volume and a ton of eyes to Bitcoin. And hopefully it also brings a ton of eyes to ordinals because when people make money, in a certain chain they want to spend more money in that chain so if people are making tons of money in bitcoin they're obviously going to go buy more uh more meme coins they're going to hold bitcoin which that's one thing i like that ordinals did it introduced a ton of people to holding bitcoin because back in the day everybody was like oh i hold eth why would i hold bitcoin uh, and now they hold bitcoin and hopefully it trickles a lot of money into ordinals and people are going to want to rep pfps for whatever nat cats or uh node monkeys puppets cats whatever it is right the main collections and of course omb uh i know we got off track we were talking about omb <laughs> i didn't want to bring this up this this triggered me dude that i get he does cool stuff okay like he gives all these away i know he's given away a ton of green eyes i have a friend shout out mg uh he won uh, a green eyes dude which is literally it went to 1.75 bitcoin like literally winning 150k or whatever that is insane um so I know, I assume he's going to be doing mostly giveaways with these, but there was a lot of the grails that were in the treasury. I saw people fighting. Like there were a lot of the grails that were in the treasury wallet. And the thing right now, if I could quickly find it, um, I'd have to find their launch pad. I don't know if you're up here, but oh, is that it? Is that it? Is this mint? Go to launch pad. Yeah. They're still minting, right? OMB. There's still 131 left. The reason for this is because the mint price is one Bitcoin. And the current floor is, is not one Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, it's 0. 0.4. And when you click mint, like, I don't know if it'll work because I don't have enough money. Yeah, it won't work. Um, but you're able to see a preview of what you're getting. Like, you could click mint, send your money to another wallet, click mint again, see a preview, send your money to, and keep checking the previews. And I guess, you know, most of the, most of the ones that would probably trade for over a Bitcoin, like this tank, or uh, there's some like, dude, the anonymous one is dope. I like this one, the upside down head. Maybe you try to sell the X one to, to Elon. Um, there's some dope hoodies. So he's, I do know he started releasing some out of this wallet. Like there was a really dope hoodie one. that The one that everybody was sharing, uh, the skull hoodie. Uh, I'll, I'll just keep, I'll try to find it. But like, why would, yeah, why would anybody mint one for one Bitcoin? You're in, instantly going to take a loss if you mint one of these at one Bitcoin and you don't hit a grail, which you can preview here. Here it is. This is the one like this one. I think it sold for, for two, but 2 2.1 Bitcoin. So the person who minted this flipped it for uh yeah, 2.1 Bitcoin flipped it for two X. So shout out to that guy. This is a dope one, right? The cool hoodies, which already hoodies already sell for a premium. Uh, the cool ones are obviously going to, going to sell for even more, but yeah, th that's the current issue. So they need to get the, the floor price to a Bitcoin or close to a Bitcoin in, if they want to mint out, which I think can definitely happen, especially when you look at some of the 10K collections. I definitely think that can happen. I think he has a ton of tricks on, up his sleeve, a ton of things planned, You know, especially as we approach ruins. If there's going to be some form of airdrop, uh, I did hear some other rumors of things he's doing. I don't want to necessarily spoil it because uh, I respect him and what he's doing. But you know, I do think we can get to a Bitcoin. But for now, it's just going to kind of be in limbo and uh, it's not going to mint out. crickets um, <laughs> moving on I don't know what you always say uh just say yeah yes <laughs> thank you no uh, i think omb is gonna go up 
Like I don't like that's the, I'm hold, I bought one. I'm holding one. Like I think eventually, yes, OMB goes up in price. Hey, Kiki, are you going to be in uh, Dubai? Nice, bro. I'll see you there. Um, I would recommend Fahad. Always dropping the alpha, sir. Thanks for watching the show. Uh, I would recommend keep some capital for the first ten tokens to launch on ruins that would be the better play than buying collections promising a token later on that's kind of yeah that's what i was thinking dude i'm like you know i, I mean the the runes that i got for free but i'll hold it i wonder how good these ones are actually going to do when you could already get in for the longest time and the prices have run up on a lot of these these ruin drops versus you know the 10 that casey's going to launch um i think he said he's going to airdrop them to like some you know some og bitcoin people i don't know how it's going to work but obviously those ones are going to be are going to do well or we hope they're going to do well um but i'm wondering which ones but yeah definitely keep capital to to play ruins because i do think there's going to be some amazing money making opportunities there we always see it right the first ones like balled on base went went crazy and then brett and uh blast was the only one where some of them did okay but it kind of just died incredibly quickly um i Inc think ruins are going to be a play there you go. That you have it. Runes are gonna no. Like I'm actually, I was listening to a couple of Twitter Spaces. I think that there's gonna be a couple of them. They're gonna, they're gonna launch. I'm gonna just follow like the big Bitcoin ordinal influencers, and like I'm just gonna go out and and just like take whatever it is, like buy five of them, like five different other runes collections, and just like see what happens. But like I'm 100 not fading that on day one. Like I'm just not. There's no way. Because I think it, they, they're going to rip. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I don't want to be fading it either. Um, can't wait for ink to drop. Yeah, everybody's excited for ink. Uh, the art looks phenomenal, dude. They, I saw they inscribed uh, all the individual traits. I guess they're doing like the recursion, so to it'll cost less to inscribe, which is great. Uh, the art just looks absolutely amazing. I'm still waiting for my one of one, bro. I still need it. Uh, what would you say? What's up, Ziana? Thanks for watching. Uh, what would you say what would you say someone would need to have to do or be prepared for the bitcoin drops uh i have no idea i'm in a ruins server called and i haven't it's called ruins legacy I'll, I'll dm it to you um actually i could just share the twitter look i have no idea okay i haven't uh i haven't done the research somebody sent this to me and so like this is a good place to hang out um oh they <laughs> follow me let's go great place to hang out they follow me I just joined this one. I'm going to poke around and ask. Um, I do want to work on a video for Ruins. Uh, I'll probably plan that for when I'm traveling. That way I have some content to put out. Or maybe I'll just put it out earlier or whatever. Uh, I do want to make a video for Ruins, explaining it to people what it what it is and how it's going to work. Because I have no idea where you even trade them, right? If it's going to, I assume it's going to be on the typical platforms. Unisat, Ordinal's Wallet, they're going to add support. But I don't know how it works. Um, John saying... Ruins Legacy is a great place to learn. Punk Toshi runs it. He's a really awesome person uh, to learn stuff about ordinal space. That's great. Great to hear, dude. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely uh, keep keep diving into this to find out more about Ruins. So I'll, maybe, I'll probably hit him up because uh, I do want to do a, a video on it. Uh, Magic Eden. <laughs> Fahad, dude, coming through, bro. Magic Eden will be launching Ruins as well. There you go. We got support. You'll be able to trade them on Magic Eden. Uh Josen as well. Ruins launching one day before the having will be so crazy. Okay, it's a day before. I thought it was on the having. Uh, day before. When is Gorilla launching Ordinal's <laughs> collection? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about that. Uh, we'll see. But yeah, I would just suggest you know have Bitcoin, uh, have the right wallet set up. I, I like Xverse. There's also Unisat. There's uh, Ordinal's wallet, but I don't think they have a plugin. I think that's uh, just on the website. Uh, I prefer Xverse. Personally, make sure you're only sending Bitcoin to the first address, not the taproot one. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll do a video to uh, or a thread or something. I'm sure NFT boy is also going to like pump out a dope thread explaining to people how it works. Um, yeah, I did uh, McCann, dude. I saw some people flooding this. I get it, dude. Uh, to me, the art is like it feels that I did pre-sale for this. I flipped for like peanuts profit. I'm happy I flipped because I'd be down bad if I held and the team made like two milli like dude you, you chose to it's funny how people get mad when they lose money at the project it's like no no dude you chose to mint this it was above mint price for the longest time you could have gotten out it revealed and you didn't so like mm. why are you mad at be mad at yourself bro like what? 
if you launched a project and it went under floor, are you going to accept that everybody's going to scream at you? Like, I don't think people understand the pressure, dude. They launched a project, and and that's it. Like, it, it went under under price, um, but it was funny to see because they didn't want to collab. I, I got the collab last second, but they didn't want to collab, and they were like, "Oh, we only want to work." And I'm getting this from a lot of Ordinals projects. We only want to. Uh, collab with ordinals communities because like ETH people are jeets and all this stuff and it's like they're it's like they're assuming you don't need a, a project that has value you just need oh all these ordinals people are going to give me their money and and magically <laughs> hold forever and buy my stuff no that's not how it works it's the same people on ETH and bitcoin it's the same people like we all hold we all have collections on every chain um, it's just the collections that people want to collect are performing incredibly well. The stuff that people don't care about, how many ordinals collections dropped that went to zero, dude, that nobody cares about and nobody talks about just the main ones get all the attention and all the volume. Yeah. Yeah. People, it's so funny. Like they think that just because somebody is like on ordinals that they're not like also a flipper. And it's just like, look, man, like everyone's flipping everything. The issue is that like these projects instead of them saying like let's create like a value prop and let's give people a reason to hold they're like who who could we who are the people that we can put our nft in the hands of to where they're not going to sell and it's like well if you give people a reason not to sell then they're not going to sell so it's not real like it's almost like they're trying to get around the problem like they're trying to like go around it instead of like say oh well if the nft is worth holding then people are going to hold it if it's not then people are going to sell it which is what i think happened there exactly yeah um what else did I, what else do we have on the list here um we're jumping back uh we have i'm just gonna throw this on you dude grapes you want to talk about grapes how they, they're down only i'm guessing yeah, <laughs> is <a> segue. yeah. <laughs> yeah i threw it on here because we talked a lot about like web3 gaming projects and like for the longest time grapes was the leader like grapes went from like nothing all the way to like three and a half ETH, and it's what really led like all those other projects like block games and mataria and whatever and it's just crazy that like now that they've done their tge like these are sitting at 0.3 and if you zoom out of this the chart looks so bad there's like no buy pressure at all i don't know who's buying these and it just it's weird to see because i just remember it being so high and i remember everyone like you couldn't even touch a grape for less than three ETH for like a month and now it's just it it's very telling that a lot of these projects are like having a hard time creating like good strong value props for their nft like it's yeah like look at the it's it dude it's just fully diluted is 50 mil yeah it's and and to me it's like i think that this is one of the main issues that we have in general is just that nfts like for what it's worth a lot of them are are very short lived like it's not like a very good long term investment or anything it's like they're good to trade for short term speculation but when you look at it it's like very few nfts have actually figured out how to hold any sort of value or attention over a long period of time and this is one that like definitely falls under that category of one that like hasn't been able to, unfortunately. That's really what I wanted to I just wanted to say. Yeah, like, no, no, I agree. Uh Keikyo to the comments saying launching a project is hard. Shout out, he's the homie. Shout out to Keikyo. He's been building for a while. It is extremely hard. Uh, I gotta I gotta spin the wheel and try to get whitelist. He hasn't given me whitelist, so I gotta go spin the wheel. Uh just giving the homie a shout out here with his project Awa. Uh, you spin and you find out if you get whiteness or not. Uh, yeah, dude, the art for this is is dope. This is some great looking trailer here. Uh, so definitely check this project out. Just want to give the homie a shout out. And then uh, I think we had one more thing on the list. Yes, I wanted to talk about Persona finally has their reveal date. Um, I But you know what's funny? I had put this on my list of like, Bro, when are they going to reveal? And then like a day later, they announce a date. So I switch it like, okay, they have the reveal date. Uh, yeah, finally. Uh, so they're revealing on March 29th. Like, dude, it did. Like, they people were criticizing them. Like, dude, what happened to Persona? They were supposed to reveal. They haven't revealed. They haven't tweeted. They're literally just retweeting Spike's tweets, like the founder's tweets. Uh, it did. To me, it did feel like this was just fun. They had a game. They have their soccer game. 
and Persona was just funding for the soccer game. Like they raised five million for that. That's how I feel about it. Um, I again, I like the art, but this is something we spoke about before they minted. And because I saw people, I saw somebody post, or I saw a few people post, like, "Where are all the influencers that were shilling Persona?" Blah blah. It's like, dude. Everybody was bullish on this whitelist. You just see an influencer's post. I don't know why everybody throws content creators under the bus as if like we split the five mil with the team. Like <laughs> dude, everybody was both posting this. Everybody was trying to get whitelist for this. It, content creators just have a platform where they could talk about things and get whitelists like as, you know, because they're doing marketing or whatever. They just get the whitelist. But it doesn't mean they're going to hold forever. It doesn't mean the project's going to do well forever. And they're obviously not going to keep bull posting if the project doesn't perform. They're bull posting because they think it's going to perform well. When it doesn't perform well, why would you continue to bull post? Because you're like, okay, this thing is not doing as well as I thought it was going to do. Um, so I understand from that part. But one thing we had said before they minted was like, at, at least I said, uh, was dude we've seen this before i felt like it was like valhalla right that's what i was telling you like valhalla everybody was sh once they revealed which i still think this can happen everybody was changing their pfp to their like forever pfp everybody was rebranding everybody loved the art for like two days and then the price goes up and then people just stop talking about it and they realize like wait where's the money like not like where's the team's money where's my where's my money gonna come from like yeah the art's nice but what's next for this? And I felt that was going to happen here. And, you know, they're hovering right now above, slightly above floor price, uh, mint price. They were under mint price for a while, but I still don't see like where I know they have a token coming uh, and you're going to, I guess you're going to get an airdrop from it. But other than that, like, where's the money with these kind of projects? Like the art is beautiful, dude. Their trailer. I love the trailer that they did super high quality, right? I'm not denying the quality or the talent of the artist, but um Persona reveal is going to cause a dump. Art is nice when you look at it in detail. It's all the same. Every male, female looks the same, same structure. I mean, that's that's the case for like most 10K collections. Uh, that one's really nice, actually. It's it's very simple. Um, no, I do think some people are going to rebrand. I don't know why the founder, the founder still has an ape. I feel like he should rebrand to a, a Persona. But um, no, I still, I think some people are going to use this as like a rebrand for themselves and uh, people like... Can Persona pull that rare post reveal pump? It could, but I feel a lot of the magic around Persona is gone just because the team just went quiet after they made five mil. Yeah, they one big issue is that like a lot of and I've I've talked about this, but it's like a lot of people love to talk about how they're these like marketing gurus that are like really good at growth hacking and getting like numbers pre mint for an NFT project and then post mint, like they just don't know what to do. And so it's like, why is it that like all these agencies and stuff, like they're only good at, at like pumping numbers like pre-mint, but post-mint they can't and they just disappear. And I just like, I have a problem with, with this project specifically right now because it's like they clearly didn't have like a post-mint like plan at all for marketing. Um, they have been silent. I don't know why they would do that. And I always loved this art. And I thought that a lot of people were going to end up changing like their PFP to it. And I just like don't necessarily know if that's like the same thing. I feel like they waited too long. They should have just done this. Like they should have done the reveal like a couple of days or like a week after. And everybody would have probably changed their PFPs to it. But now I don't see anybody talking about it. And like a, a one big thing with like projects is that people like to have like forward facing leaders people that they can get behind people that make them hype and it's like i just don't know who that is for this project like i don't know where the the excitement has has gone and like i don't know why there wasn't somebody on their team that all they did was just sit and bull post about how great persona was going to be and keep people engaged knowing that they were going to take a month to reveal it yeah or even just have like some trailers or something you know, like like their pre-mint trailer, which was amazing. It was like a Studio Ghibli type of thing. You just have anything other than just, you know, posting a, an, an NFT that's going to be revealed soon with like a tagline. Uh, but I think most of their focus was on their, like I said, they have this company, Unagi, and they've they've built, uh, they have uh, a basketball and a foot, foot or a, I was going to say soccer, a football card game. Uh, so I think that's where their all their attention has been. That's why there hasn't been much about 
Persona, because like I said, Persona does feel like it was, I mean, obviously they're building a brand and everything, but it does feel like it was just a funding round for their other games. Because how much money are you really going to make out of Persona in the future? Yeah, you could do merch or you could do some other stuff. Maybe you could try going down the anime route, but they're going to make a lot more money out of these games if these games are successful. So I think yeah. that's where, where most of the focus has been. And, you know, if, if holding a Persona gets you some sort of exposure, like I said, you're probably going to, I think you get the token for these games um, for holding a Persona. So you're going to get some money there. So you want their games to be successful. But I think that's where they spent a lot of their time. But yeah, it was kind of uh, a weird move. But I feel like a lot of the hype's gone, so it can be pretty difficult for them to to pull uh, pull a post reveal pump. But like, like the art is beautiful, dude. The art is really nice. So I do think a lot of people are going to be posting it. But I think we're we're kind of past the phase of people just buying something because they like the art, right? Yeah, you're you're buying something because you think it's going to go up. Because we're all here for money, and most people who went through the the bear especially realize like, wait. I'm here for money. Community is just a, a bonus. Yeah. At this point, like a lot of people are just thinking about, hey, like I need to stack crypto. And like the people that have been here for the past two, three years, they know that like the community aspect is bullshit. Mm -hmm. Wag me is not real. It's just a tagline to uh, pull you in. Um, they are called pre-marketing gurus, not post-marketing gurus. Yeah. Uh, it's like you said you know, it's still difficult to do. It's very difficult to do. You need a, you need a good combination of a good project, the right team and everything, but it's way easier to promote something before than after. Like, dude, how many projects have we seen uh, pump like crazy? And then once it becomes real, once they start to deliver, the price just goes to zero because we like the speculative side and pre-mint is pure speculation. Once it mints and you see what the floor is, then you're kind of like, okay, what's next? Oh, we're, we're dropping a, uh, merch or we're going to drop what like who okay who cares like where's the money uh so people just exit it is incredibly hard i get asked all the time by a team like hey what would you like to see i'm like guys you have to answer this question and like that's that's the golden question you know it's like you're you run a company a web 2 company you're like what products should we build that our clients are going to give us millions of dollars for like yo you got to figure that out yeah for real two things don't just don't seem to align for me a software company yet using a third-party platform and a game studio with an aesthetic that doesn't match the audience although gorgeous i uh, he's saying the mix of you're saying the mix of persona with the game that doesn't match um i mean the software company using a third-party platform i don't know if you mean exterior for their mint or for their games because i'm not familiar to be honest with their games so uh if you elaborate that would help um I would ask how many projects really care after they they collected all the money. That's the main issue with NFTs. You get paid up front. You get $5 million up front. There's no more royalties anymore. So what is your incentive to keep building? Before Mint, you didn't raise nothing after you already collected. Uh, why would you pay an agency? Well, they pay, yeah, they pay them to help them raise the money from the Mint. And then after that, yeah, like... You know, some projects bring on advisors and stuff and they try to ideally, but it's funny, like the, dude, the legit projects, the games and stuff that are actually building that, that are, you know, they're, they're building a real game. Nobody cares about, right? Some of these game collections have like super low floors and they're legit building something. They have a future and nobody cares about, um, he, uh, yeah, you're saying for the mint. Yes. I mean, I, I have no problem with them using exterior, right? Exterior, uh, had a ton of great, successful mints. So them going through exterior is fine. I don't see an issue with that. It helps them with marketing. It helps them like, you know, if you're building a game, if you're building something, don't, why put your, your time, uh, your focus into like, oh, we got to figure out how to do a mint instead, just work with a company that already knows how to do it. And, uh, and it, and it's done. Like what, that's one thing I learned in the software when I used to build websites and, and we were trying to build our startup. It's like, we spent way too much time trying to build our own tech all the time. It's like, no, no, just use somebody else's library that already does it. Even though it's not hundred percent what you want, you want to customize it. Who cares? Just use their library and focus on the core of your product. Put your time in your customers and into your product as opposed to like, oh, we need to build all this stuff. We need to build our own marketplace. We need to build our own, uh, alphabet for raffles for our whitelist like a lot of projects wanted to do that and then they realized like no um what are your thoughts on block are you participating in the pre-sale 
I'm very bullish, sir, or, or, or ma'am, by your picture. Uh, I am very bullish. Uh, I tried to get even <laughs> KOL around. I couldn't. Um, I'm trying to get pre-sale right now. I have to look at the terms. Like I haven't fully seen the terms, especially for the NFT. I, I, the NFT gets you preferred, or the, I guess the NFT too, but the, um, what's it called? The the lucky rolls. The lucky rolls, they say it gets you preferred uh, terms. So no, I'm very bullish on block games, especially after Portal. I think most people aren't going to want to fade it. Um, and, and their, their farming campaign is going really well right now. Like this is what exchanges look for. So hopefully they can hit a tier one exchange because they are getting a ton of attention. There's a ton of people doing it and there's a lot of games, dude. I mean, uh, I'm going to be doing videos next week on this kind of stuff. Like all the, the tokens people are farming right now. Um, my brother said he had his block game NFT for, for 2.3 ETH. Yeah. I mean the block games, right. They have the multiplier and the multiplier uh what's it called block games dice yeah i don't know why there's two collections it's weird uh the ash let me know if you got to go away because we're, we're going over here but uh yeah the, they have these multiplier traits so if you have the 10x like the the floor on these is much higher because these give you a multiplier in uh the app to farm to farm for the token and i mean if you look at portal dude the top farmers made a quarter mil from portal based on the price uh, I still don't know what the FDV is to, for the presale. I don't know. We don't know the terms. So it's hard for me to say like, yeah, I'm I'm crazy bullish, but I, I am bullish. Like I am trying to get as much exposure as I can uh, to to block games. If I can get some presales or whatever. I have lucky rolls, but I'm under oppression. It's a first come first serve. Um, I forget. Is this uh, lucky rolls? Is that guaranteed when you win the roll? Oh yeah. It's a, it's a wait list, right? It's a wait list code. So you have to do it and then you get the wait list. Uh, I think the only guarantee is if um, you get one of the rounds or if you hold the dice. I'll, I'll re-look into that. But yeah, I believe it is wait list. Um, I don't think it's going to be a, I guess it's a, a raffle thing. It's not going to be gas war. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Uh, I'm going to be posting about them. Like I said, I'm going to do content. I'm going to do a video next week on all the stuff you can farm, block games and a few other tokens. So I'll cover all this stuff. Uh, but I guess that's it. That's it for today. Seems like that's it for the questions. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Once again, the audience just gets, keeps getting bigger and bigger. I'm loving it. We're going to have to start streaming multiple times a week soon. Um, but yeah, this was fun. Thank you, Ash, for being here. Thank you, everybody in the audience. Thank you to my beautiful girl in the background taking her nap. Um, we will be here every single Friday, 10 30 AM till 11 30 or sometimes past AM Eastern. Thank you everybody for watching. Face and the stream awkward seconds when the stream is taking time to end.